What type of a player do you, do you feel like you were? Because you were so popular amongst the fan base here, and the fans still love you. Uh, I still love the fans, but um, I just was a guy that went and laid it out on the line every night. Um, I felt I was just one of those guys you could depend on, and you knew that would, would come, come, come through for the team. Uh, you know, whether we were down 20 or up 20, I was going to leave it all on the floor. And, and if, if I had a chance to try to win the games for us, I would. Um, I think that my class, well, I'm sure of my class, you know, we finished the most wins in school history. So I want to be, you know, one of those guys that's just remembered as a winner and just left it on the line for the university. You mentioned your class and, and your senior year and that, uh, that team. I know everybody loved you guys because you won so many games and, and a Big 12 championship, but at the same time, there was a, a strong, you know, love for you guys before that season even, even played out. Why, why were you guys so closely connected to the fan base and especially the students that, that, uh, that you were playing for? Well, I felt just coming in as a freshman, we kind of changed the culture of the, the basketball program. Uh, we kind of we did things the right way you know uh, a lot of the guys were coming in working hard and I felt the fans appreciated the fact that we earned what we were doing on the floor they they seen a lot of things that they didn't like with the program and we came in and we made an effort to try to change that and I think that we did a, did a good job with it and of course when you're winning games on top of that everything else just kind of blends together you know, you, you didn't talk a whole lot on, on the court as, as we, were, we were just talking about, but I can remember um, as the confetti was falling in the Sprint Center and everyone was putting on the hats, uh, I saw you and, and uh, I still have the, the shot of it. I, I got caught you with an ear-to-ear -ear smile. Can, can you remember what, what the feeling was like in your hometown winning that game and how you felt? Yeah, that feeling right there, it just, it just was really amazing to, to be able to come in with, with guys that I fought for four years with and the last Big 12 championship for us uh, there in Kansas City, my hometown in the Sprint Center. And just to you know see the confetti, see the, the, the smiles on the rest of my teammates and coaches face it, you know, that, that, that's a feeling that you can't, no one can take it away from you. You know, we, that was something that we earned and I think it was really important for us to, to finish the Big 12 tournament like that and uh, do it in front of my home crowd and in Missouri, you know, it just was important for us. That last game in Missouri Arena against Kansas, and I'm sure you get asked about this all the time, but I'll be the next one. Those last few minutes when you put the team on your back, what was going through your mind as you were making those shots, making those plays, and, and, and bringing the team back to a win? I was looking at the faces on my teammates and the faces on all the, the crowd. I could just, it's a million things that played through my mind. I, I remember just seeing the fans out camping before the game, the night before the game, and you know, seeing my teammates and understanding how much it meant for us to, to win that last game at home for, for the team, for the fans. And, uh, we took it one game at a time, but we also understood how important that game was. And I just seen a few opportunities I had and took it, took advantage of it the best way I knew how. I think it was the shot that put Kansas up 12 or, or something like that right before you went on your run. Thomas Robinson hits a fadeaway baseline jumper and runs by the announce table and shouts, I'm a bad man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, I'm a competitor, so... I'm not going to let anybody, especially on the court, I'm not going to let anybody say anything out of line to me or to my teammates. And I felt that, you know, when you, when you hear people trash talking, I, I was getting a little trash talk going on that game as well, but um, you, you just have to make someone pay for it. And that, that was my mindset. Did you at any point say, give me the ball, I, I, I want to do this? I think uh, that team, we definitely shared the ball, but uh, I, I like to take it on myself, you know, when we had those clutch moments or when we, we would need something going down at the end of the game. I always wanted the ball or I always wanted to take the shot or make the play, whether it was on defense, whatever we had to do, I always wanted to take that initiative and make the play. And as a leader on that team, a lot of my teammates also, you know, were looking for me. They always would try to look for me in those type of situations. We're talking about so many great memories. I know, you know, you had some rough times off the court during during your, your uh, sure. how, how much did having the, the family here at Mizzou, especially you talk about that senior class, those guys that you spent all four years here, 
How much did that Mizzou family help you through some of those tough times? Sometimes when, when you're away at school or in a different situation where that's not home and that's not family, you don't have anyone that you can lean, lean on or you don't have anyone that can help you get through those tough situations. But uh, from the moment I came to Mizzou, the fans, you know, the university, my teammates, they always backed me and uh, they, they made it a lot easier for me to, my college process was my best four years of my life. And I love the university and it, it was something that helped me become the person I am today.